Hello, hello, and welcome to the Simply Wall Street Portfolio. In this video, we want to show you how you can get the most out of the tool in its current state, and also what we've got coming in the near future. So let's dive in. When I'm checking my portfolio on Simply Wall Street, which I do weekly or fortnightly, I'm looking to answer a few key questions, and they are, one, how has my overall portfolio performed in general and against the broader market? Two, how are my narratives for each stock tracking? Three, are any of my stocks now overvalued or undervalued? Four, am I over or underexposed to certain stocks? And lastly, five, are there any better opportunities on my watch list that I should consider adding to my portfolio? So firstly, I'll look at my portfolio returns. For this, I'll look at how my portfolio has performed in terms of total returns on the left-hand side here, and how it has performed against the broader market. The green line is the weighted average of my stocks, and for now, it doesn't currently account for transactions, but it will soon. In this example, I haven't bought or sold any of these stocks within the last year, so this chart is accurate, but if I had bought stocks, it wouldn't account for them accurately just yet. So here I can see that I'm up 90% in terms of total returns and 34% over the past year, which is great to see because I'm significantly outperforming the broader market. Next, I want to do a narrative check-in and make sure that my narratives for each respective stock I own are tracking along as expected and don't need any updating. For this, I'll hover my cursor over each stock and one at a time, I'll scroll through on the right-hand side here through the Updates tab to see what recent events have occurred since I last checked in. This includes things like valuation changes, analyst updates, insider buying, and many other events. What's great is that if I have important updates turned on within my notification settings, I'll get an email or a push notification on my phone for any of these developments. If there's anything worth noting, I'll add a note or update my high-level narratives, which I'm currently storing within the notes feature for now, as you can see here with Visa. I can see here that Visa is reporting its earnings on the 25th of July. So, I'll write a note to myself to check back on the 25th for its earnings results and look for anything in the reports that challenges, supports, or updates my existing narrative, like earnings trends, revenue challenges, and that kind of stuff. I'll do this process for each stock in my portfolio. Next, I want to see if any of my stocks are potentially overvalued or undervalued. Once I've seen if any narratives need updating or revising, I'll review each one of my holdings in terms of the price versus fair value column. Here, I'm doing a quick check to see if there's anything worth potentially adding more to if it's quite undervalued, or potentially trimming if it's quite overvalued. To do this, I'll sort the holdings via most undervalued and see them from top to bottom. Now this fair value figure currently defaults to the Simply Wall Street's estimate of fair value, which you can find on the company report, but we'll soon be releasing an update where it syncs to the fair value that you can set either here or in the watchlist tab. In this scenario, you've ideally done a valuation yourself based on your own narrative on the stock and set your own estimate of fair value, and that figure will be displayed here, but again, that's coming soon. For now though, let's say I agree with simply Wall Street's estimate of fair value, and that's my conclusion. As I scroll through my stocks here, I see that I might need to review my narrative and holdings in Visa, Tesla, and Netflix to see if my latest narratives of these respective stocks justify the current price, or if I should consider trimming these positions considering they're now potentially overvalued. As for Google and Johnson & Johnson, they might be worth adding more to considering they're trading below my estimate of fair value. But again, I'll review my narrative first to see if my growth estimates need to be updated from the last time I checked in on this and confirm if I still agree with the valuation estimate. Now that I've had a look at each stock, I just want to assess how my exposure sits among these different stocks. So am I overexposed to anything that I should trim or am I underexposed to any stocks I'd like to invest more in? Here, I can see how much I originally invested in the stock, which is the small grey number called cost, and how much it's worth now, which is the large white number called value. Also, I can see the percentage weighting it has within the overall portfolio today, and what my average purchase price is. Here, I can see that Netflix and Visa represent 47 and 26% of my portfolio, respectively. That's a big part of my portfolio in just two stocks alone. So while I might really like both of these businesses, I have huge exposure to both and they're potentially overvalued if my hypothetical estimates are correct. So based on this large exposure, now might be a good time to review these holdings in more depth and trim my positions in them if I believe they're not worth holding anymore. Not only to reduce my exposure to them, but to use the cash elsewhere where opportunities for upside might be better. 
And the last thing I do is look at my watch list to see if there's any opportunities on there that I should consider adding to my portfolio or swapping in if current opportunities that I own have finished running their course. For this, I'll go to my watch list and sort the list by most undervalued. Here, I can see Amazon, Alphabet and Uber are potentially undervalued, so I'll review them and see if they warrant adding to the portfolio. So that pretty much sums up how you can get the most out of the portfolio as it currently stands. I want to wrap things up by sharing some important things to note and what we've got coming soon. First thing to note is that the performance figures and average share price figures don't currently account for transactions, but they will soon. If you don't have any transactions in the reported performance period that you're looking at, like 7 days, 3 months or 1 year timeframes, then the numbers are accurate. However, they won't be correct if you do some trades in that period. So for now, keep that in mind when looking at these performance percentages and dollar figures and don't rely on them too heavily. Secondly, the fair value can only be set within the watchlist tool for now, but will soon be available in Portfolio 2 and they'll sync together for the same stocks. For now, the fair value defaults to the Simply Wall Street figure, which is just an estimate. You should always come up with your own fair value for each stock you own or want to own so that you have conviction in your own buy or sell decisions. Finally, let's talk about what we've got coming in future updates for the portfolio, and in no particular order, they are 1. The ability to add transactions within manual portfolio uploads. 2. The performance figures you see will account for transactions and measure performance more accurately from either a manual portfolio upload that you do and any linked brokers who support this functionality. 3. We'll be adding more broker integrations that can be linked to your Simply Wall Street account. 4. Our highly anticipated revamped portfolio analysis will be gradually released and give you new and unique insights into your portfolio. 5. We'll be adding the ability to change the benchmark that you can compare your performance against to include indexes like the S&P 500. And lastly, we'll be adding the ability to customize the holdings table columns to include things like intraday pricing if that's what you want instead of the default options. While we're working hard on getting these updates out as soon as possible, we'd always love to hear from you, our users. If you have any feedback, please click the leave feedback button at the bottom of the holdings table and let us know what you think. To sign off, just remember, think in decades, not months. Reach your own conclusions and be a lifelong learner. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, invest well.